Thanks for taking care of my daughter this past month. I'll come pick her up tomorrow. What are you talking about? Sherry, my sister-in-law, who had been traveling for a month, seemed still to be at the airport, as I could hear the sound of boarding announcements through the phone. In contrast to my calm response, she began to panic. Wait, what, no, what are you talking about? She's there, right? I left Daisy in your condo's garage. Daisy is her daughter, my niece. I haven't seen her, what are you talking about? Don't play dumb. I sent you a text, so you know. I haven't received any text. You're lying, I know you're lying, don't play with me. Sherry screamed over the phone, panicking. What are you going to do about it? I left Daisy with you. You're responsible if anything happens. After hanging up once, Sherry tried calling Daisy's child safety phone, but not being able to reach her, she continued to panic. She called me back, even more frantic, so I suggested she might want to go home first. You're right. That's a good idea. Upon her return home, she found her husband Leon, Daisy, and me, the three of us together. Sherry seemed to want to ask why the three of us were together. Sherry, I've just been hearing all about it from these two. What? At Leon's words, she turned pale. My name is Bonnie, and until a few years ago, I worked a regular office job. Upon turning 40, I became independent and started working as a freelance illustrator. With the increase in income, I now live alone in a condo. My work is primarily home-based, and I only leave the house for essential errands like going to the grocery store or meetings with clients. I'm not married, nor do I have a partner, but I'm satisfied with my life. Friends sometimes ask if I'm lonely, but I've never thought about it that way. I'm more fulfilled by my work and have no plans to look for a partner. I do worry about old age a little, but I think to myself, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it, to which I'm surprised at my own optimism. Today, after meeting a deadline for an illustration, I took a break at 3 p.m. and looked at the calendar. Then, I realized that my brother Leon's birthday was coming up soon. Leon, five years my senior, works in sales at a major publishing company and often goes on long business trips. Sometimes, he brings back souvenirs from his travels. Last month, he dropped by and brought some cookies as a souvenir, so I let him in, made some coffee, and we enjoyed the cookies together. I keep telling you, you don't need to bring anything for me. Buy more for Sherry and Daisy. But I need to see your face from time to time. Don't want to find you laying on the floor. Leon has always been like this, considerate or meddlesome, but it's one of his good traits. Sherry and Daisy are his wife and daughter, therefore my sister-in-law and niece. I haven't told Leon, but I find Sherry a bit difficult to get along with. She's very bright and always dresses fashionably, with her nails done and in the latest trends, giving off a very glamorous impression. It's not that I mind that, but she often looks down on me for being single. At a family gathering at Christmas, she laughed upon learning I had neither a partner nor a love interest. Hey, are you the type who thinks you can afford to wait because you're always young and beautiful? Don't you know about the marriage boat? I think marriage and romance vary by individual. It's not necessary to have a partner. She laughed again at my response. I couldn't tell if it was the alcohol or what, but she kept teasing me about the same thing, and it became tiring to deal with. When choosing a condo to live alone, being away from Leon's family was definitely a criterion, that's how much I was fed up with her. However, I got along well with my niece Daisy. She turned 10 this year and seems to go to school carrying a cute light blue backpack. I haven't seen her in it, but she told me about it when she came to visit. Bonnie, you're so good at drawing. Daisy, who had been watching me work on illustrations, was impressed and stared at the drawing on the computer screen. Wow, I wish I could draw too. Oh, want to try? Really? Yeah, there's still plenty of time before the deadline, so you can have a go. Daisy sat in front of the computer and excitedly started moving the pen. What she drew on the screen was her light blue backpack. She mentioned it was heavy because she also carries a tablet in it. Considering it's even heavier with a water bottle in the summer, I was really impressed by how strong she was despite her small size. 
According to Daisy, Sherry spends her days as a housewife, and when Leon is away on business trips, she does whatever she pleases. For dinner or lunch on days when school is out, they eat frozen meals or pizza delivery. I'm the one who always does the laundry, and mom only does it once in a while. Really? Yeah, and she gets really mad when my shoes are muddy after PE. Why? What does mom do at home? She's always on her phone or watching TV. Daisy tries not to upset her mom by staying in her room or going out to the park or the library. Hearing this makes me wonder about parenting, but it's tricky to know if it's my place to say anything. There was another time when the family gathered, and I saw Sherry scolding at quiet Daisy harshly. I think Daisy had spilled some tea, but I thought it wasn't something to get so mad about, it could easily be wiped up with paper towels. Mom is scary, she gets mad at everything I say, so I just keep quiet. Daisy's offhand remark about her mom as she was leaving, after drawing her light blue backpack, stuck with me like a splinter. I remembered that day was a sunny weekend, and Sherry had left Daisy with me because she was going on a day trip with her mom friends. I never imagined receiving a similar text on my mobile phone just a few days later. The autumn leaves in the nearby park had deepened, and it was getting to the point where you missed the warmth of the sun, that kind of coldness had arrived. When I returned to my condo after running a small errand, I saw the silhouette of a girl standing alone by the parking lot. She was wearing a light blue backpack, and I was surprised to recognize her face. Daisy? When I called out to her, her anxious eyes looked up at me. It was indeed Daisy. What are you doing here all alone, and what's with the luggage? Next to her was a small carry-on case, making it look as though she had run away from home. M, Mom said to go to your house. Seeing my confusion, Daisy gestured towards my bag, saying, on the mobile phone. Perhaps there was a text on my mobile phone. I hurriedly took out my phone from my bag, and indeed, there was a text from Sherry, albeit recently. Bonnie, sorry for the sudden request. I'm going on a trip with a friend for a month starting today, please take care of my daughter. After reading it, an inarticulate exclamation escaped my lips, but I quickly closed my mouth. Of course, it was out of confusion, but considering Daisy was probably just as bewildered, we decided to go inside. Once inside, Daisy's cheeks were as red as apples, and her hands were very cold. I made her some hot cocoa to warm up a bit and offered her some snacks while listening to her story. Up until a short while ago, Daisy had been drawing in her notebook in her room. Sherry entered Daisy's room without knocking, handed her a carry-on case, and said, Daisy, get ready, we're going to Bonnie's house. Mom won't be home for a month, so bring your backpack, okay? Understood? Okay. Thus, Daisy quickly packed her notebook, pencil case, textbooks, and tablet into her backpack. During this time, Sherry was on the phone, seeming quite restless. Really? That's great! Don't tell me, are you drinking already? It's too early! Sherry's voice was high-pitched and filled the house. Hearing her mother's unusual laughter from downstairs, Daisy covered her ears. After the phone call ended, Sherry's voice returned to normal, and then Daisy was left at that place with her luggage. When Daisy got out of the car, Sherry explained to her. Be good, I'm leaving you with Bonnie for a month. She was told to wait here and had been waiting under the cold sky. Despite the sunlight, it was quite a cold season. Thinking about what would have happened if Daisy had caught a cold made me feel a rising anger at the situation. But does Leon? I mean, Dad know about this? I don't think so. Mom doesn't seem to contact Dad much. She told me so as she munched on chocolate cookies. While I thought how cute she looked with cookie crumbs on her cheeks, I felt it was wrong not to inform Leon and decided to call him later. Bonnie, I don't want to be with Mom anymore. Suddenly, Daisy said this while staring at the rim of her juice glass. The girl who had been happily eating cookies now had a troubled look, far too mature for her age. Why? Because mom gets angry easily, and she throws things at me, like the trash can. I hate it. The trash can? I haven't done anything wrong. She says I'm in the way, tells me to get lost, 
and throws things. My teachers at school won't believe me either. I can't stand it. Tears were streaming down her face. It must have been very hard for her, as she continued to cry, and I spent the time soothing her back and offering tissues until she calmed down. Clearly, what was happening to her was not normal. Convinced of this, I decided to call Leon to see if he could come back and help. Stepping away for a bit where Daisy couldn't see, I pondered how to explain the situation to him, then an idea came to me. All right, this might work. I murmured softly and dialed Leon's number. What? Daisy? Yeah, yeah, what did you say? Leon seemed quite shaken as he listened to the story, his voice trembling slightly. At first, he joked, saying it must be a prank, not funny, but as I continued, he believed me and listened seriously. When I shared my idea for a plan I had come up with, Leon agreed to it, saying he would take time off work to help. All right then, please take care of it. Don't worry, Daisy is in good hands. I hung up, then quietly deleted the text from Sherry from my mobile phone. Looking towards the living room, I wondered if Daisy had calmed down and quietly went back. I should splurge a bit and treat her to something delicious tonight. With that in mind, I slowly returned. The school Daisy attends is a bit far from here, but I explained the situation to the school and arranged for her to take the bus. This way, carrying her heavy backpack, including her tablet, would be a bit easier. Planning to bill Leon for the bus fare later, I continued my work from home during the day. Daisy doesn't have any extracurricular activities, so she comes home right after school to do her homework. Bonnie, can you check my homework? I was surprised, isn't that what teachers are for? But according to Daisy, it was different. All my classmates have their moms check. I always did it myself. Realizing Sherry had always put herself first, I picked up a red pen. After checking her homework, it was time to prepare dinner. When I stood in the kitchen, Daisy followed, saying with her eyes, I want to help. Today we're making meatloaf, so, could you start by peeling the onions? Sure! Daisy was surprisingly quick at peeling onions, and she efficiently followed directions to help cook. I wondered where she learned to cook so well, but there was no time to ask as the meal was ready before I knew it. As these days repeated, we enjoyed our time together, and before we knew it, a month had passed. Looking at the calendar, I anticipated Sherry's call, and sure enough, it came. Bonnie, thanks for taking care of my daughter this past month. I'll come to pick her up tomorrow. What are you talking about? I replied calmly. Sherry, who had been traveling for a month, seemed still to be at the airport, as I could hear boarding announcements through the phone. Wait, what, no, what are you talking about? She's there, right? I left Daisy in your condo's garage. I haven't seen her, what are you talking about? Don't play dumb. I sent you a text, so you know. I haven't received any text. Are you sure you're not mistaken? You're lying, I know you're lying, don't play with me. Sherry, seemingly panicked, screamed over the phone. What are you going to do about it? I left Daisy with you. You're responsible if anything happens. I'll call Daisy to see what's up. With a sharp tone, she angrily hung up the phone. After a while, another call came in, and Sherry was yelling again. Sherry tried calling Daisy's child safety phone, but not being able to reach her, she continued to panic. Sherry, why don't you go home and calm down first? That's true. You're right, I'll go home now. After that, there was a forgotten hang-up, and voices arguing could be heard, Sherry and presumably a man, but it was too far to make out clearly. The room returned to silence, ominously quiet as if before a storm. When Sherry finally came home, her footsteps thundered down the hall. Entering the living room, her face went from a demonic frenzy to a pale shock. It was because she found all three of us in the living room, Leon, Daisy, and me. Sherry's mouth moved as if to ask why the three of us were together, but no sound came out. Sherry, I've heard everything from these two, and about that call earlier. What? I put the phone on speaker so we could all hear. I thought it would make it easier to discuss what comes next. By the way, Daisy's child safety phone was turned off, 
so it was natural that Sherry couldn't reach her. How could you do this? That's my line. I said I didn't know earlier, but we've been taking care of Daisy for a month. How could you just leave her at someone's house and go off on a trip suddenly? I sent a text about it. That's not the point. Leon carefully chose his words and spoke calmly. Let's all calm down, Daisy is here too. Sherry, it's true you left Daisy and went on a trip by yourself. Your attire and luggage look like you've just returned. Sherry was dressed in a warm coat and stylish outdoor clothes. With lots of luggage, perhaps from shopping for souvenirs and clothes, her carry-on looked full. Without denying, Sherry started making excuses. Yes, I went on a trip. I just wanted a break from being a housewife, the laundry, cooking, it's all the same every day, I was stressed. It's not too much to ask to go out with friends. Is this the friend you're talking about in these emails? I presented several sheets of paper. They contained email exchanges between Sherry and what appeared to be her affair partner, discussing plans for their trip. Dating back to last spring and even on the day I took care of Daisy for one day. The supposed day trip with mom friends was a lie. Sherry covered her mouth as if realizing her mistake. Actually, a few hours before Sherry arrived, at Daisy's request, I had looked through Sherry's computer and found these emails in her mailbox. Daisy had noticed her mom frequently texting someone not her dad and suspected the affair. Her suspicion turned to certainty when she saw texts from an unknown man on her mom's phone while she slept. Also, when Sherry was on the phone, she could occasionally hear the other person's voice, but it wasn't her dad's voice. I heard from Daisy six months ago that Sherry was having an affair. I had been skeptical until Sherry suddenly announced her trip a month ago, but after checking the computer, I realized Daisy's intuition was right. You could see Leon was visibly shaken. What have you done? I trusted you, and you leave Daisy with Bonnie to go on a trip for an affair? Leon confronted Sherry with a trembling fist. It's a misunderstanding. I was forced to go on that trip by him. Forced? You left your family for a month for that? Come up with a better excuse. I was threatened. Believe me, Daisy, you believe me, right? Daisy, suddenly addressed, responded calmly and plainly. Mom, you were so happy on the phone before you left. And you made me do all the cooking and cleaning while you just slept and lazed around. Daisy glared with her lips pursed. And you tell me not to stay up late, but you'd go out at night and come back in the morning to sleep on the floor. Everything you said was inconsistent. Hearing this, Leon pressed further. Going out at night? You were partying? It's not like that. Daisy, stop talking. I quickly showed Leon the photo on my mobile phone. It was a photo captured of Sherry, who was dressed up and heading out late at night. Several months ago, I got a call from Daisy, and since I happened to be nearby, I took this photo, but I was surprised too. Where were you trying to go at that late an hour, Sherry? Oh! She was confronted with the photo, and perhaps realizing she could no longer make excuses, slumped down right there. I can't believe it. I can no longer entrust Daisy to you. Let's get divorced. I'll demand alimony. From now on, you're free to be with that other man. Leon said so with his shoulders drooping and then turned his back on Sherry. What? A divorce? You're kidding, right? Why? Don't you feel sorry for Daisy not having her mom around? What about you, Daisy? Come on, help mom out. No, absolutely not. Bonnie feels more like a mom. I felt very embarrassed as an adult to see Sherry cry to her own child but Daisy brushed her mom off. While I was taking care of Daisy, I made time for her as much as possible, discussing school, hobbies, future dreams, and various other topics. Of course, cooking together was one of those things. Sherry, don't worry. I'll make sure Daisy is happy. I said with a smile, and Sherry hung her head dejectedly, saying nothing more. Six months later, her divorce from Leon was finalized, and custody went to Leon. Sherry, dragged by her parents, went back to her hometown. The man she had an affair with, whom she met on the internet, 
disappeared as soon as he found out about the divorce, and communication was cut off. By the time she realized she was just played, it was too late, leaving her with a hefty alimony and child support bill. Her savings were far from enough, and she managed to make the payments by having her parents bear more than half the burden. However, that led to stricter surveillance from her parents, and she could no longer go out late at night. Moreover, the rumor that she got divorced and came back home without her daughter, spread throughout the neighborhood, and she was met with cold stares when walking outside during the day, so she rarely left the house. Still, she couldn't remain unemployed forever, so she would have to re-enter society at some point, but what happened after that is unknown to me, Leon, nor Daisy. Leon and Daisy have moved out of their original home to rent it to someone else and are now living on a different floor of the condominium where I live. They plan to use the rental income for loan repayments and savings for Daisy. I've started visiting them almost every day. Leon, who was often away on business trips and couldn't be near Daisy, regretted not being able to pay more attention to his family and focusing too much on work, decided to change jobs. Changing jobs in his 40s was supposed to be a challenge, but his sales performance was excellent, and his communication skills were high, so it was not surprising that he could have held a position of some responsibility. Therefore, his job search did not drag on too long, and six months, he received job offers from two or three companies and starting work at one of them. I was surprised that Leon had such abilities, but what surprised me more was that he preferred outside sales at his previous company and gently declined promotion offers. It wouldn't be interesting to stay on the same company floor all the time. For that reason? But the new job is fully remote, right? Yes, but talking with various people is interesting in its own way. Most importantly, being with Daisy is the best. Daisy is still going to school with her light blue backpack. Moving changed her school district, requiring Daisy to transfer schools. Though it must have been sad to say goodbye to her friends and teachers, Daisy seemed surprisingly calm, even enjoying her new school life. Daisy, have you gotten used to your new school? I asked while making dinner together, and Daisy smiled. Yeah, I made a friend in the class next door. Already? That was fast. Daisy nodded shyly. Yeah, next time, I'm going to make meatloaf at their house. That sounds fun. Yup. Seeing her smile like a blooming flower made me smile too. Her dream is to open a restaurant. Thinking it's solid for a 10-year-old to have such a dream, Daisy shared her reason. That friend, like me, doesn't have a mom who cooks, so she cooks herself. She said she wants to cook for people who don't have someone to cook for them, like us. Is that so? I hope I can be like that too. So, I'm practicing making meatloaf. Her innocent laughter made me feel a complex emotion for a moment, but I quickly smiled back. That's great, Daisy. Your meatloaf is delicious. I want many people to taste it. Thanks. Seeing Daisy looking forward with such earnestness made her seem incredibly strong and shining. Her dream will not end in fantasy or delusion. I'm looking forward to the day when Daisy grows up and opens her restaurant.